hi guys hope you guys are well i hope you guys are staying safe it's been a long time and i thank you guys for staying tuned and sticking with me it's been such a long time and i am really ashamed of myself however life has just been life in we thank god for life and all that we have today anyways i've missed you guys so much thank you so much for holding down the fort if you're new here welcome welcome my name is ayotola the creative director of so unique badani and the content creator of this youtube channel diy with so unique badani and this channel was created just for you if you're a lover of diy crafts and sewing videos especially don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you don't miss out on the awesome content that i have for you if you're an og or returning subscriber what's up i missed you guys so much welcome welcome um thank you guys so much for all that you do i can't believe that we're at 41,000 subscribers despite the fact that i've been away i mean it's absolutely mind-blowing however enough of my blabbling um let's go straight into the video so last time i made a video which was three months ago yes ashamed three months ago i made a video teaching you how to draft a basic body it's actually the second time i've made a video on that so if you haven't seen go ahead and watch that video because you need it to make today's peplum top so go ahead and watch it i put a link in the description bar above in the description bar below rather as well as in the icards above so click on it and watch the video as a refresher or whatever and then you can come back and watch this video start by drafting your basic bodies like i said if you haven't seen that video go ahead and watch it now after drafting your basic bodies the next thing that you want to do is you want to close the front start just like i'm doing right now if you need to use a paper tape or a pin to hold the dart in place go ahead and do that after closing the dart, the next thing to do is to decide on how wide you want your shoulders to be. It could be two and a half inches, one and a half inches, three inches, whatever that you want. So go ahead and mark that point, which is what I did with my marker. And then the next thing you want to do is decide on the neckline that you want. I went with a basic round neckline. So I went ahead to draw that in place. I have a video showing you how to draw different kinds of necklines. If you haven't seen it, click on the link in the iCard above and then go and watch that video. After deciding on the neckline, I went ahead to cut it out and then I took out my pins. The next thing to do is to sort out the back. So for the back, same thing applies. You want to close the darts just like I've done and hold it in place with a pin. And then you want to mark your shoulder length. Obviously, it has to be the same one as the shoulders in front. Now, this is where I made a mistake. I don't know if you guys noticed, but my front shoulders ended up being smaller. And you'll see how it affected my work later on. I went ahead to draw in the back neckline. And at this point, I wasn't sure I was going to do a cut out detail i was just saying oh if you wanted to do a cutout detail you could do something like that however i decided to do a cutout detail so basically to do a cutout detail from the back arm all line i went ahead to just draw in a curve as you can see which was supposed to be my cutout detail however i went ahead to make sure that it was fine-tuned to do this i elongated my dart so that the dart was meeting the other dart right after elongating my dart i noticed that my cutout detail would have just been a bit awkward so i proceeded to taking the cutout detail towards where the dart was stopping i just elongated it or made the curve a bit steeper avoid confusion i went ahead to label the parts so i labeled the cutout part as one then i labeled the back lower back as two and i labeled the side back as three i went ahead to kind of cancel the areas that i'll be cutting out so that it's clear for you guys and then i proceeded to cut out my pattern After cutting out the pattern, I went ahead to lay it on the table and then I realized that the cutout would be a bit too small. So I went ahead to make it deeper by cutting a little curve into the second piece or piece two. So as you can see, I drew in a little curve just to make it slightly deeper and then I cut it out. Depending on how wide you want your cutout to be, you know, feel free to play around with it. You can have it as big as you want. We can have it different shapes. I'll probably make another video with a cutout soon. Anyway, after doing that, I had my pieces and I just placed it together so you can see what we're looking at. Now that all our pattern pieces are ready, I went ahead to cut out the front. I labeled it as well. The front only has two pieces, so piece one and piece two, and then I went ahead to cut it out. So we have all our pattern pieces complete at this point.
after cutting out all the pattern pieces the next thing for us to do is for us to cut out our um peplum for this actually i should call it a circle right it's actually a circle until it's attached to a waist and then becomes a peplum i have a detailed video explaining the whole concept of circles and peplums and you know how to cut them and how to calculate them and i'll put a link in the icons above go ahead and watch the video however for this i cut out a full peplum which is a 360 degrees peplum and i lost some footage showing you guys how i cut it so unfortunately i don't have that but like i said i have a detailed tutorial showing you how to cut the peplum so i went ahead to cut out the peplum using my anchor fabric and then i went ahead to cut out lining making sure that it's the exact same thing as the peplum or as the circle with the ankara fabric i used my ankara fabric as the template to cut that however when i was cutting out the ankara fabric i did have to calculate using the calculations that i explained in the other video so go ahead and watch the other video I went ahead to mark the wrong sides of my Ankara and then I went ahead to place my lining fabric on it just so that you can see that they are the exact same thing. After aligning my lining fabric, I went ahead to pin down the center front area and then I went ahead to pin it all through so that you know it is really nice and even. The next thing I went ahead to do was just to flip it just to make sure that everything is even and nice. After ensuring uniformity between the lining and the main fabric, I went ahead to slit the center back area. So remember that there are two sides. One side I've designated as the center front. The other side will automatically become the center back. I went ahead to slit that because there has to be a zipper. So I slit the main fabric and I also slit the lining. And then I went ahead to hold them with pins. Now for this, if you wanted to make your peplum high low, there are so many things that you could do. You can decide that you want the back to be higher or the front to be, you know, higher. However, in this case, I wanted the back to be higher longer so um i decided to reduce the length on the front now depending on how when you how short you want your front peplum to be you can make it like six inches seven inches however for me i wanted it about nine inches so not too short you know so i can cover the belly so i went ahead to mark where i wanted it to be and then just threw a slight curve again this is not a very hot, obvious high low peplum because my back is not so long because again i was being very miserly with fabric but if i had you know so much fabric i could make the back as long as 14 inches and then the front maybe like eight inches and then the high low effect would be very obvious however it wasn't too bad i went ahead to make notches at different points on the circle just so that when i'm sewing it i can match the notches the next thing to do is to cut out your pattern pieces with fabric um for this fabric i decided i wanted to place my fabric so that the the lines on it are vertical so you can decide you want to make them horizontal however i prefer when you know lines are vertical because it kind of gives a slimming effect maybe not so much with this fabric but it does do that so i went ahead to pin the center front first of course i pinned it properly starting with the center front area pinned it all around and then i went ahead to mark out my allowances i repeated the same process for the side side or the side front as well as one of the back pieces you want to make sure that you properly pin all your pieces and they are flat and as well you want to make sure that you're working on the wrong side of your fabric so this is the wrong side of my ankara after pinning all your pieces you want to make sure that you add an allowance of half an inch all through the center front you want to make sure that you add an allowance on one inch around the side seam area so basically that's the armhole area and then you want to make sure you had an allowance of half an inch around, you know, where the center front, the side front joins the center front. So you see it as I'm marking it now, one inch at the side seam and then the other side seam will be one inch. If you notice, I didn't really measure the other parts, but that's because I've been sewing for a while. So I have become familiar with half an inch. However, please don't take chance chances. Don't be like me. After cutting out those pieces, I still have two pieces to cut out. And these two pieces, they will be for the they'll be part of the back pieces. For these pieces, I wanted to cut out the lining from Ankara as well. So I used the scrap fabric from the circle to cut out piece one. For this piece, I'm cutting out four pieces. Like I said, I want the lining to also be Ankara. So as you can see, I cut out four pieces. I placed it on the fabric and I measured my allowance of half an inch all around and then I cut it out. And then for the second piece, which is piece two, 
I want my lining to be Ankara as well. So as you can see, I folded it into two and then folded it again so that you have four layers. And then I've placed it on the fabric, pinned it in place. Now for this, you cut half inch all around, but you have to put one inch at the center back, which is where the zipper will be. So as you can see, I went ahead to mark one inch i don't think i did actually i think i just cut out one inch just because again like i said i've been sewing for a bit so i am quite familiar it doesn't mean i don't make mistakes mistakes but i am quite familiar with what one inch is at this point i've cut out all the main fabric for all the pattern pieces that i have so remember that for the front piece we had piece one and two and then for the back piece we had three pieces so for piece one and two from the back i had cut out the main fabric as well as the lining however for piece three at the back and piece one and two for the front i hadn't cut out any lining so i went ahead to cut out my lining using the main fabric now as a template so i just placed the main fabric on the lining and then just cut it out as you can see After cutting out all our pieces, main fabric as well as lining, the next thing to do is start joining them. I start with the front pieces, so piece 1 and piece 2, which is the center front and the side front. I go ahead and unpin it and mark the wrong sides. Starting with the main fabric, I go ahead and lay the center front in the center, making sure that the right side is facing me, and then I put the sides on each side. I go ahead and join the left side to the center front and I pin it all the way from the bottom to the top and I repeat the same process for the right side as well. After pinning, go ahead and sew it on half an inch sewing allowance and repeat the same thing for the other side. After sewing, this is what it should look like. Now that the main fabric is done, you want to repeat the exact same process for the lining. So go ahead and place the center front in the center and then sew the side fronts as well. After sewing the lining piece, I tend to top stitch my lining and that's because I feel like it gives it a cleaner appearance and I'm just really happy with the results. So I went ahead to top stitch as you can see. Now that the lining piece is ready, go ahead and place the lining piece on the table and then place the main fabric on it so that the right sides are facing each other. The next thing you want to do is check that the necklines align as well as the arm all. After that, you want to go ahead and pin the neckline in place. You want to start pinning your neckline from the center and then work your way to the top. I do this so that I make sure that everything is just equal. The next thing to do is to sew your neckline together on a half an inch sewing allowance. Of course, you'll be sewing on the wrong side. After sewing the neckline, you want to make sure that you notch the neckline properly and the purpose of this is to ease the tension because it is a round, you know, or a semi-round um, stitch. So you want to make sure that you notch it to release the tension and then go ahead and top stitch it obviously to the lining area. 
Next, you want to sort out the armholes and there are two different ways of doing that. However, in another video, I'll show you the second method. For this, you want to make sure that you flip your fabric and your lining so that the right sides are facing each other and then you align the armhole areas. Again, you want to make sure the right sides are facing each other in this case. Go ahead and pin it in place if you need to and then sew it on half an inch sewing allowance. After sewing the armhole, you want to make sure you notch and you top stitch as far as you can. As you can see, I top stitched but not all the way to the top and which is fine. Go ahead and give it a good iron which is what I've done at this point and then let's move on to the back piece. While working on the back pieces, it's imperative that you remember that the lining is also made out of Ankara. Go ahead and unpin all the pieces and then mark the wrong sides as applicable. After marking the wrong sides, go ahead and align piece 1 and piece 2 as shown. You want to overlap the pointed edges and just overlap them by half an inch and hold them in place with a pin like I'm showing you right now. So repeat that for this side as well as the other side. And then we're going to go ahead and sew it in place. After sewing, this is what it should look like. So I went ahead to do one so you guys can see a visual representation of what we're about to do because I think it's easier to digest that way. So let's go ahead and work on it now. You want to start by laying all your pieces on the table. Remember that we have three distinct pieces for the back. So we have piece one, piece two, which essentially make out the cutout, and then we have piece three. Go ahead and lay all the pieces so that the right sides are facing the table and the wrong sides are facing up. Then you want to go ahead and pin piece two to piece three so that the right sides are facing each other. You start pinning from the bottom and work your way to the top. After pinning piece two and three together, you want to pin piece one to piece three, making sure that you have the right side facing each other and then you have the right side as the neckline and the right side as the cutout. You want you don't want to mix them up. So if you must, create a notch so that you can tell the difference between the neckline and the cutout area. After pinning, go ahead and sew it on half an inch sewing allowance. We're going to repeat the same thing for the lining piece. Again, like I, like I reminded you earlier, piece 1 and piece 2 have Ankara as their lining. So go ahead and match it so the right sides are facing each other, pin it in place, and then go ahead and sew it on half an inch sewing allowance. After sewing the back pieces, this is what they look like. So go ahead and open the lining piece as well as the main fabric piece and then lay them on each other so that the right sides are facing each other. You want to make sure that the arm all the cutout and the neckline pieces or areas are aligned and then you want to start with the neckline. Sew the neckline in place on by half an inch sewing allowance. You want to make sure that you give it a good notch when you're done and then you top stitch as usual. After top stitching, go ahead and flip it so that both fabrics are facing each other and then we want to go ahead and sew as shown. You want to make sure that you sew vertically first and then you follow the shape of the cutouts sewing on half an inch sewing allowance all through to get to the end of the cutout as shown. One very important point to make is that when you're making the turn, and you get to the angle you want to leave your needle in the fabric and then just raise the foot up and then just turn the fabric i don't know if that makes sense but that's very important
now that both back pieces are done this is what it looks like and as you can see it looks really nice i've gone ahead to fold in the area for the zip allowance so you guys can actually see what it looks like like and this is what it looks like the next thing to do is to sort out the shoulder area and this was the area that i was saying earlier so basically i made my front shoulder so much smaller than i made my back shoulder and i can see it here and I made that mistake during my pattern. I should have paid more attention. However, we're going to turn the shoulders and just sew it together. And like I said, there are two methods to doing the ammo business. Um, I used my least preferred method in this case. So the first thing you want to do is you want to place the wrong side. Um, you want to place the right sides of both of both pieces on each other. So I placed my front on the back piece. Now you want to make sure that when you're placing it on the back piece you, the back piece has the lining separate from the main fabric as you can see then you want to go ahead and fold it over fold the lining over the main fabric so basically it's like a sandwich the front piece is in between the lining and the fabric for the back piece i know it's a bit confusing but just watch what i'm doing i'm going to show it again slowly All right, guys, I know most of you caught that, but for those of you who didn't catch that, I'm going to do it again. So like I said, you want to make sure that you have your front piece separate from your back piece, right? So as you can see, I've done one side. However, we've not done the other side. So for the other side, I place my back piece on the table. Then I place my front piece on it. You want to make sure that for the back piece, the lining is separate from the main fabric. Now you place the front piece on the main fabric and then you pin it in place, which is what I've just done, as you can see after pinning it in place then you flip the lining of the back piece over it so it looks like a sandwich essentially the front piece is sandwiched in between both pieces you sew the shoulders horizontally right and then you go ahead and sew the armhole so after joining the shoulders essentially you would have you might have a bit of bulk it might be worth it to trim it a little bit but this is what it should look like it should both meet and it should you know all just be seamless so the next thing to do is to close out the ammo like i said i made a mistake so i had to trim it however if you cut it properly you would have no problems because you have just half an inch left so you want to go ahead and sew all the way from the bottom to the top again like i said you should have half an inch but i made a mistake so i had a little bit too much so i cut out the excess and then i went ahead to sew the half an inch all the way from the top all the way towards the end of the mo after sewing please feel free to notch and then top stitch if you can After sorting out the arm all, this is what your body should look like at this point. The next thing to do is to join the side seam area together and the best way to do that is to first lay your bodies on the table and then you want to start from the arm all area. So you grab the arm all for the front piece and the arm all for the back piece and then you match them together making sure that the lining is to the lining and the main fabric is to the main fabric. Again, you want to make sure the right sides are facing each other. So again, I'm doing this so that you can see properly how it should be done i lay the fabric on the table and then i place the two linings the lining and the main fabric to my main fabric making sure the right sides are facing each other go ahead and pin it starting from the main middle which is where the arm all starts and then work your way to the bottom After joining the sides, this is what your bodice looks like. At this point, you literally have a crop top. All you need to do is finish the bottom. However, like I said, we're going to add a circle to it to make it a peplum top or even a basque, depending on the size. So I don't know if you guys know, but a basque is actually shorter than a peplum. So this is actually going to be a peplum top because of the length. Go ahead and grab your circles. And remember that we had made notches. If you haven't made notches, go ahead and make like four to five notches at different points, especially at the center front areas. 
unpin your um, circles so that you can have the lining separate from the main fabric and then go ahead and lay them on the table you need a large surface area you want to make sure that the right sides of both fabrics are facing each other and the notches align i start pinning my way from the bottom and from the center front area so i find the notch on the center front area align them and i pin from that area to both sides after pinning the entire circumference of the circle, go ahead and sew it in place by half an inch sewing allowance. It might also be helpful to sew the top by 0.25 so that it keeps it from moving when you're about to attach it to the main or to the bodice. So after doing that, give it a good iron and this is what it should look like. Next, we'll be joining the circle to the bodice, but before we do that, you want to go ahead and make a notch in the center of the circle. The best way to do this is to fold your circle into two and then just make a notch in the center. You also want to make a notch in the center of the main fabric bodice as well as the center of the main fabric um, of the lining bodies as well. So go ahead and make a notch in all the centers. Now that all the notches have been made, it is now time to join your pieces together. You want to find the notch in the circle and then align it with the notch on the bodice um, main fabric. You want to make sure that the right sides of both fabrics are facing each other and then work your way pinning from the notch center all the way to the sides. After pinning the entire circle to the entire main fabric bodies, go ahead and sew it. You can sew it on half an inch sewing allowance or 0.25. I say 0.25 because you still have to sew in the lining. However, you know, depends on you, half an inch or 0.25. Now that the main fabric has been sewn onto the circle, it's now time to cover it up with the lining. Now to do that, you want to find the center notch on the lining and then you want to align it onto the center notch on the circle. It's very tricky, so you have to be observant when you're watching this part, guys. I'm not sure I can explain this with words, but what you want to do is you want to get your main fab, your lining, and then you want to flip it. As it should be so basically i hold it from the inside and then i flip it it's a bit confusing but guys just watch it i'll show you a couple of times so you guys can see it and then you can repeat the entire process All right, guys, so at this point, you can go ahead and sew the lining and cover it up. You want to be sewing on half an inch sewing allowance at this point because you'll be sewing all three pieces together. After sewing, go ahead and sew in the hook and eye. Obviously, you have to unsew that and then go ahead and put in your zipper. This is what the finished product of the top looks like. It's a very simple top and as you can see, the cutout detail is absolutely cute. So this is what the top looks like after finishing it. Thank you so much guys for staying to the very end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was worth your while. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to leave your comments, suggestions and feedback in the comment section. I love you guys and I will respond as soon as I can. Have a good week.